Hello there people, I'm Ajualani and this gives me my stop. Yeah, we give you the fun, the educative, the entertainment and everything that you want. You can get it here. Yeah, I can trust it. You can trust me with that, yeah. Okay, so if you are a new person here, like a fresh person here, you know what to do. Just click the subscribe button and like this video for me. Don't forget to leave a comment because Ajualani has a lot more to offer. Like, she's... Uh, please. Mm. Okay, so I have a lot of things to talk about today because we're going to talk about the twins. Yeah, melancholy and phlegmatic. But before that, let me recap a little bit of what sanguines are because that's what we talked in a previous video. And we said sanguines, they are easygoing, they are very outgoing, they are extroverts. They love picking conversation, like um, socializing with people. They find it's very easy to start conversations. They are always in for a new friendship they are very emotional aside all these things they are not self-discipline self-discipline is not in the dictionary because they can't really make up their mind when it comes to certain things and also um they like wasting time a lot because not wasting time as in um wasting time with that but you always want to be in the spotlight okay so that makes them delay in decision making because if it's not putting them in the spotlight they don't want it so if it's clothing they are going to try on different 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 clothes till they get one that puts them in the spotlight they are very curious and they have a lot of dopamine in their system i've summarized everything i'll leave a link below where you can go and watch the full video on sanguines yeah but before we go into the twins, let's go for a short break. So welcome back. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm still at your learning. And we are talking about the twins of temperament that is phlegmatic and then melancholy. Now, now these two are very, very much alike to the extent that when you see a phlegmatic, you might think the person is a melancholic. But there's a little bit of difference. And I'm going to show you each character and then I'm going to talk boil down to the similarities and then the differences between the two. So stay tuned. Let's start talking about melancholy. Melancholy are the people I like to call um, the perfectionist. Like they are so into perfection. Okay, they want things to be done this way. Like they, are, they want everything to be perfect. Like so, even when they have to do something, they have to take their time and then think, think, think. They are also thinkers, massive thinkers, mind blowing thinkers. Even when a thing does not make sense until it makes it they are still going to think about it like how they like to analyze everything they are very observant and they like to be very very organized they are usually very quiet you know that person in the class who is um, probably doing all the right things and yet they're so quiet behind the scenes and um, you hardly even hear them speak or laugh or even try and socialize yeah that person is a melancholy they don't like that kind of um let's do this in a group let's no they don't like that they will prefer to be vaccines do everything and then they're okay they are good to go and they don't like being in the spotlight nah that spotlight is not part of their whole dictionary they don't like that kind of thing and because they are very observant they like to keep distance <laughs> like always they want to keep away from people because they feel I observe this thing about this person. So when I get close to a person, they might influence me. And one thing about them, they don't like being influenced by people or what people say. They don't like that. They don't they don't do that kind of thing. They want to think for themselves. They want to be their own person. They are very independent and then they can perform tasks on their own without supervision. Not even a tiny bit of supervision. They can do it to perfection. Long colleagues. They are so organized that they keep schedules of their day, of their month, of their year. They are the ones who usually have them um, planner books and then they write everything. So in the morning I'm going here. To, they don't like impromptu things. They are not very impromptu. 
they don't like no they're not it's not like they're not very they don't like impromptu things if you bring impromptu things to them they feel you are disrespecting their space because they have to plan everything according to you so the moment you bring something impromptu it's, it means you are disrespecting me you don't respect me like how can you just bring something for me to do meanwhile it wasn't part of the plan they don't do impromptu things but, so again melancholics don't say what they feel they show you by means of action they won't tell you that i love you but they'll send you gifts they'll call you they'll try they'll make every effort to communicate with you in ways that they are comfortable with okay so they, they might not even call you every day or might not want to listen to you whatever you have to say every day but they will try and make the effort to listen to you because they want to have the kind of relationship with you also they don't like it when people um, come into their space and trying to control them they, that don't they don't like that they don't do that kind of thing yeah they don't do it and lastly before i go um melancholics they tend to have intense mood swings which can make a relationship or everything around them very awkward there are times most of their mood swings are so random and very frequent and this is as a result of a lot of serotonin produced in their system serotonin is a neurotransmitter in their system yeah and it, it kind of controls their mood so they kind of have intense mood swings when it comes to getting angry or getting pissed yeah they have the kind of neutral phase that you don't want to venture with that is as a result of a lot of neurotransmitter serotonin produced in their system that is a melancholy so moving on to phlegmatic now for phlegmatics they like people yeah they like they're the people who will connect to the dots they will sit down with you you have an issue to talk to you about it you know they'll kind of connect to the dots but when the dots don't connect they find it kind of useless to think about it they are very indifferent they like um, to be indifferent wherever they are and they don't like being imposed on just like a melancholy they don't like you telling them what to do and stuff so as i was saying yeah they are very indifferent people and when they can't connect to the dot they just forget it. it's like that, that means whatever thing they are not able to connect does not make sense it's useless kind of so they just proof just think about it and go my way yeah that is uh, phlegmatic that is how they act like they are also like ah uh, they are like meh if you're not really close to them meh your issue is not their issue okay and they 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 really like to keep in contact with family and friends they don't like it when people they are close to betray them because they keep family and friends very close to their hearts so phlegmatics they can be very very relaxed people even when the situation is bad and people are, are driving crazy they are going super mad intense everything a phlegmatic is always calm yeah they are always always very calm i don't know why how that is even possible but almost half of the time they are so calm very relaxed even when someone yet just died and people are weeping even the person can even be they are very close to them but still they remain very calm and it helps them in keeping peace amongst people so you know that kind of friend in your gang uh, who is always relaxed always chill always like a befa a befa even when things are not going well oh tell you a befa relax or like kind of the person does not like that kind of fighting and stuff so when fighting is even going on the person steps in it's like oh charlie more relaxing like they yeah that kind of person yeah that person is a phlegmatic because they don't they can't stand noise they don't do noisy things so they try to stay away from noisy environments they prefer cool places so they help them keep their mind relaxed also phlegmatics produce a lot of estrogen which is also a neurotransmitter or a hormone in the body so all the other temperaments they do produce estrogen but that of phlegmatic is quite high 
Okay, so for individuality sake, I have talked about melancholic separately and I've talked about phlegmatic separately. Now let's talk about the reason why I keep saying they are twins and you know you can confuse like one for the other. So let's start with loyalty. They are both very loyal people. Phlegmatic and then melancholy. You will never get any loyal people than them. Like hands down loyalty. They don't change their mind about people except when you do things which affects them in diverse ways and um, affects them in different ways or affects them negatively even till that they give you a uh, benefit of doubt and when it comes to benefits of the doubt phlegmatics actually give a whole lot of benefits of doubt than melancholy melancholy don't like to be crossed they don't like it to be betrayed they both don't like that but when you betray a phlegmatic he or she gives you a second chance because they, they are people who really believe in family and friends, closer, strangers, people. Okay. So they are going to give you a second, third, fourth chance until you really cross a boundary you're not supposed to. Then you're out. But for melancholy, mm, don't even try and get in his face. That kind of thing is what they don't, 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 don't do that. If I'm ready to share my space with you, that's cool. But don't, don't force yourself into my space. The two for the two phlegmatics are more welcoming when it comes to people because they allow people into their space, they allow family into their space, they kind of feel comfortable with people being in their space as long as you don't cross the boundary of imposing on them or telling them what to do, trying to control their life. That is off. By melancholy, uh -uh, I'm not even giving you that chance to even get into my space, don't even, mm -mm, don't even cross that, that boundary is already there, like. The space boundary is there. Don't even cross the boundary before you come across another boundary in the space. That kind of thing is there. Even when they are dating you, melancholy, or even when they are dating you, mm -mm, they don't, you can't cross that kind of space. There are some things that you don't touch. You don't touch this, you don't touch that. You touch that, I get mad. And for the two, um, phlegmatics really express their emotions better than melancholy. Melancholics. They are, they are very neutral, so neutral. Even when it hurts them, they, they are not going to react to it. They are just going to act like everything is okay, everything is normal. Just breathe in and you'll be fine. That is melancholy. But a phlegmatic won't mind you. But when it, it becomes over, they just burst open and tell you their mind. That is a phlegmatic. They don't like telling you people how they feel. But when they do, that means you over, you keep doing the same thing over and over again, and it's it's deceiving them, it's worrying them. Then they are going to come up to you and tell. But if a phlegmatic does not know you, they they just assume I don't know you, you don't know me. This is the only time we are going to meet, so it doesn't matter. Just do whatever you want to do and get off. Okay, they only come out with their emotions and your feelings when they get to know you when they are like that with you they just kind of pour their hearts out to you and tell you yo this is what you did i don't like it and that's that's what they'll tell you don't be like don't go and stress on when they start there then they bang, they bang, they bang. Uh -uh. They, they are very quiet people they are short sentences they give short sentences that's what i mean what i mean i say short sentence that is what they do they just tell you i don't like this don't even tell you that I don't like this, so stop it. No, I don't like this. So stop. It. And then they expect you to just know, say, I'm telling you to stop it. But melancholy don't won't do that. It's up to you to realize how they feel. Because don't tell you. The actions will show you. When a melancholy does not like you, they keep off feeling like far away from you. When they don't want to be in your matter, they try very hard to avoid you. When you are knowing them, they just push you away. When they want to be alone, they are surely going to push you away. But they're going to do it a nice way by giving you an excuse so that you get it like I want to be alone kind of thing. Yeah. But another thing is they don't they both don't like me to be told what to do. They don't they don't like mm -mm, don't don't tell me what to do kind of attitude. No, don't do that. Don't don't ever do that to, to any of them. They don't like to be told what to do. Well a melancholy, a melancholy when you're telling them do this, do this, do this. They're going to keep learning. Okay, I hear you. Okay, fine. 
but it doesn't mean the fact that they are nodding to you means they are accepting what you're saying they, are, they just want you to finish talking so that you just go away so they're just going to listen to you okay 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 and but that is all they don't do anything to it but a phlegmatic will go and show on you when especially when you're imposing on them they just go like mm. you're telling them something okay i want you to be i want you to be like, like Like, they're not even going to show you that they're listening to you. That's a phlegmatic. Meanwhile, a melancholy will give you signs that they're listening to you. They're listening to you. They're taking you in. They're taking your advice. But no, they're not doing that. Trust me. They never do that. They will never take your advice. When you're imposing on them, you suggest to them, fine, they're they going to listen to you. But if you impose on any of them, they don't, they don't like that. Okay. Another thing is, you know, Melancholics, they are so calculated. In fact, they are so calculated to the extent that when even they want to go and drink water, they have to calculate the number of minutes they will get up from their chair, walk to the kitchen for a cup, and then take the cup and fetch water inside and drink it. The number of minutes they will put the cup down and then walk out, they calculate everything. Everything about them is calculated. If it's not calculated, they are not accepting it. Simple. That is a melancholy point. They calculate everything, they are so observant and then they calculate everything and then though um phlegmatics they they are not so calculated but when it comes to um, very tough decisions they become very very calculated when it comes to decisions concerning life concerning death concerning things which are which affect them very much Phlegmatics become very calculated about such things. And these things make both of them delay. They get so delayed. Like, I need you to decide on this. And then you are not calculating when you use this. This is what will happen. This is what will happen. No, we, we don't do that. You delay your time. You got to make decisions on point. We don't want any miscalculations and, and, and stuff. Just give what you think. They can't do what they think. They have to calculate everything. That's for both of them. It hurts me to say, but I know a lot of melancholy and phlegmatics in my life, and sometimes it's stressful, especially when me I can't decide what to eat, and I'm asking them what do you want to eat, and they are going like, ah, oh, meh. It's annoying. There is another point I'm going to raise next. They are both whatever kind of people, although. Phlegmatics have a little bit of passion. Let me put it that way: passion for family and friends. So, when it comes to family and friends, they are a bit emotional than phlegmatics in terms of expression. They, when it involves family, they hardly say whatever or do things because they feel when I say this, I'm going to hurt this person. Like melancholy, on the other hand, they don't care. Family or not, they don't care. What they feel is what they feel. And they're going to tell you upright to your face. This is what I'm feeling. I'm not feeling what you're doing. So can we stop this kind of thing? And it's very bad when um, a melancholic becomes a toxic person. Because they have weird ways of making things seem like your fault, even when it's not their yeah, it's, it's totally their fault. They can just turn things over just like that because they like to be perfect so they can't take responsibility for anything that makes them feel guilty or makes them feel bad they can't do that they don't like taking responsibility when it comes to <laughs> apologies forgiveness they, they don't want to take part in that because they want to be perfect on their own however phlegmatic don't they can just say I'm sorry, even when they don't mean it. They just go like, okay, I'm sorry. Even when they know they are not at fault. Just to end this whole thing. Well, sorry. They can just say it. But melancholics find it very disturbing and very difficult to say sorry. And lastly, lastly, they are both very quiet people. Very quiet. Melancholics, however, are not shy people. They are just quiet people. They less like to be by themselves. They are not team players. I don't like doing this with people whether you're family or not when 
this we have to do this now nah, let's not do it i want to do everything on my own so they are just so quiet they like to be by themselves and all phlegmatic on the other hand is very shy they are they are naturally shy people and quiet so in that sense they are quiet because they are shy let me put it that way they are quiet because they are shy so but when they are with their friends and their family you might think this person is really outgoing this person is really open-minded this but in that sense they are very shy people who don't like making new friends they both like to stick by the rules they both like to do things as originally planned they don't like important things that's what i'm trying to say like traditional way of doing this we decide this we are going by this kind of people so this brings us to the end of my babies my twins yes they are wonderful people i i i actually find these two very interesting because serotonin estrogen a lot of stories behind those neurotransmitters but i love them equally and we are done for today so the next time we meet we'll be talking about choleric yeah choleric i know hmm. a lot to say about them not really but we'll get to that so see you guys later on i love you all i'll see you bye bye